Okay, here's the final part to grade nine math in an hour. So it's end up going to end up taking me a little bit longer an hour to get through all three, but this is definitely the shortest section. I should be able to do the section in under 10 minutes. This section is on geometry. So in the geometry section, um, I'm just gonna quickly go through these topics for part three of um, grade nine math in an hour. So this has been the last unit you would have done. You probably would have started by reviewing parallel line theorems. You probably would already know these from grade eight, but parallel line theorems, basically if you have two parallel lines, you can tell they're parallel because these little arrows here, if we have two parallel lines that are cut by a transversal, um, there are some theorems we can use to find unknown angles. So first uh, theorem is the alternate interior angles theorem, and that tells us if we have this Z pattern, the angles inside the Z are equal to each other. Also, there's the F pattern. We call those corresponding angles, the corresponding angle theorem, the angles inside the F are also equal to each other. And lastly, we have the C pattern. We call those co-interior angles and the angles inside of a C, they're not equal to each other, but they do add to 180. So we can use those three theorems in combination with supplementary angles and um, opposite angles. Remember opposite angles like this angle here and this angle here are equal to each other. We can use these theorems to be able to figure unknown angles if we have parallel lines. So if we have here two parallel lines, this tells us they're parallel. Um, let's find these three unknown angles using our parallel line theorems. Well, first of all, here's A. A is opposite from this 75 degrees, and we know opposite angles are equal, so I know A is equal to 75 degrees, and we could state off the side here, they're opposite angles, and that's how we know. Um, let's, find, let's find B next. Well, B, look at this F pattern here. I've got an F pattern. I know angles inside the F pattern are equal to each other, so I know B is equal to 75 degrees as well. And there's lots of ways I could know what angle C is. Um, I could see an F pattern here, so I know A is equal to C. Um, I know B and C are opposite, so I know B and C are equal to each other. Or I could look at this Z pattern here, so they're alternate interior angles. These two angles are equal, so I know C is also equal to 75 degrees. Next thing you would have looked at probably is Pythagorean Theorem. Pythagorean Theorem um, can only be used when you have a right triangle. And a right triangle is a triangle that has one angle equal to 90 degrees. And we can tell because there's this little rectangle inside marking off that there is a 90 degree angle. Um, <clears throat> In a right triangle, one of the sides we call the hypotenuse. How do we know which side that is? Well, it's always the longest side of the right triangle. And if you can't tell which one's the longest, we know it's always the side that is opposite from the right angle. It's always the side across from the right angle. And what is Pythagorean theorem? Pythagorean theorem tells us that the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides, so the square of the shorter two sides, if we add up those areas, it should equal exactly the area of the square of the larger side. Algebraically speaking, we say a squared plus b squared equals c squared, where a and b represent the shorter two sides, and we sometimes call those the legs, and c represents the longest side, we call that the hypotenuse. So, so Pythagorean theorem, the sum of the squares of the shorter two sides, so a squared plus b squared is equal to the square of the longer side, c squared. Well, let's practice using Pythagorean theorem. It can be used to find an unknown side of a right triangle as long as we know two of the other sides. So for this triangle here, we have our right angle here, which makes the side opposite that right angle our hypotenuse, and we always use the letter C for the hypotenuse, and we use the letters A and B for the shorter two sides, doesn't matter which is which, but we know that Pythagorean theorem is true for all right triangles, so A squared plus B squared equals C squared. We can use this formula to figure out the unknown side C by plugging into our formula. Nine squared plus 12 squared gives us c squared. If we evaluate 9 squared plus 12 squared, we would get 225. That's what c squared is equal to, but to figure out what c is equal to, we have to isolate c by moving the square to the other side. The opposite of squaring is square rooting. So I have to square root 225 to get me c. The square root of 225, what times itself is equal to 225? Well, that's 15. So c equals 15. So we would say c equals 15, and we are in meters. So I should write meters beside that here. What if the missing side is one of the legs? So once again, right angle opposite that is our hypotenuse, that's C. So our legs are here and here. If I use Pythagorean theorem, A squared plus B squared equals C squared, my unknown this time is the B. So I could start by rearranging the formula, or I could plug in and then rearrange. I'm going to plug in first. So I know A is 5.4, so 5.4 squared 
plus b squared equals c squared. And I know c is 10.3. And now what I'm going to want to do is isolate the b squared by moving the 5.4 squared to the other side. So I have b squared equals 10.3 squared minus 5.4 squared. b squared, if I evaluate that, I get 76.93. And then if I take, sorry, that's b squared. To get b, I have to actually square root the 76. 0.93, and that gives me an approximate answer. I should write approximately here because I've rounded this answer. If I evaluate that, I get 8.77. 8.77. All right, and oh, what units are we in? Centimeters. Okay, so that's Pythagorean theorem. The next thing you probably looked at is um, three-dimensional shapes getting surface area and volume of 3D shapes. I'm sure you remember what the difference between volume and surface area, so let's just go into a couple quick calculations. Let's start with a couple different prisms. Um, here's a rectangular prism. It's a rectangular prism because the base of it is a rectangle. Let's find the volume of this rectangular prism. So volume of any prism is actually just equal to area of base multiplied by the height of the prism. And since the base of this shape is just a rectangle, let's find the area of the rectangle by doing its length times its width. So length times width, and then multiply that by the height of the entire prism. So LWH is the volume of this rectangular prism. We could get that formula from our formula page, rectangular prism, volume, area base times height, which is length times width times height. So if we evaluate this, volume equals 9 times 7 times 16, we would figure out volume is 1,008 centimeters cubed. Uh, remember, volume is always in units cubed. Here we have a triangular prism. Let's find the volume of this as well. Remember, it's always area base times height. So the base is a triangle, so I'm going to need to find the area of that triangle. Area of a triangle is base times height divided by 2, and we call the base of the triangle of the triangle B, and we call the height of the triangle, we actually call it L, because we need to use H for the height of the prism. So we're going to have to do B times L divided by 2, and then multiply that by H. So our formula for volume of a, pris of a triangular prism is BLH divided by 2. If we plug that into our formula, 2.3 times 3.4 times h, which is 4.8, divide that entire product by 2. And if we do that, I'll just write my answer below here, um, we get 18.768 meters cubed. And lastly, I have a sphere. So this one's not a prism, um, but for a sphere, let's instead of finding volume this time, let's find let's find the surface area this time. Surface area for a sphere, it's four pi r squared. We can look at our formula page. Surface area, four pi r squared. So we're going to find the surface area of this sphere, four pi r squared. Remember, r stands for the radius, which is the distance from the center of the sphere to the edge. If it gave us the diameter we would have to divide it by 2, but it gives us the radius in this question. So just plug in our radius. So 4 pi times 28 squared. And make sure you press the pi button on your calculator. Don't use 3.14 approximate value. Your calculator stores many more um, digits for its pi value, so you get a more accurate answer if you actually use the pi button on your calculator. So if we do 4 pi times 28 squared, um, and make sure if you're doing this step by step, you're following bed mass. Um, but if you're typing it on a scientific calculator, it'll do the correct order of operations here for you. And we will get 9852.03. In this case, we are in millimeters squared. Remember, surface area, it's always in units squared. Volume, it's always in units cubed. So 9852.03 millimeters squared. So Probably uh, lastly in your geometry course, you would have done some optimizing measurements. I'm not going to have time to get through that because I think I'm already over an hour. But these are the main concepts you would have done in geometry. Some surface area volume calculations, um, Pythagorean theorem, and parallel line theorems. So that's it for grade 9 math in an hour. Hopefully you watched all three parts and you're ready for your math exam. Um, yeah, and that's it.